Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial and uh, in today's episode I wanted to talk about something slightly different than the music production or the audio sound design. I wanted to talk about how to monetize uh, your passion in um, audio manipulations, let's call it like this. Uh, I say audio manipulation because music is organized sound and uh, if you know how to make music you know how to manipulate sound in order to make the music. So if you have these skills you can apply this uh, to, to a real life job. So in this video, I just wanted to collect uh, ideas and opinion and, and ways to make a little income uh, on the side while you're making music or while you're trying to be, a, uh, you know, in your whatever you're doing with your music career. So, um, and uh, before we continue, I just want to make a disclaimer that I'm not an expert in this sector. I am not an expert on monetization. I'm just a guy who has been doing this for 12 years and I've been failing on many things and I've been succeeding, su succeeding on others. And um, I found my own balance in, in uh, or making an income with my passion. So I just wanted to share a list of things that maybe can be helpful for you. So let's have a look. If you make music, if you release music, you can register yourself to a music publishing. So what is a music publishing? A music publisher is responsible to ensuring that songwriter and composer receive payments when their compositions are used commercially. What I mean by that? Performance royalties. So your song gets played on a radio or a TV. Your song is performed by an artist on stage. Uh, your song is streamed on Spotify or Apple Music. So the job of a music publishing it's to collect every time that your music is played outside of, of your control you can find music publishing by google them and when once you find the music publishing there, there are there are private companies there are public companies the public companies depending on uh, which country do you, li you you live if you are in the united states probably is bmi if you live uh, in uk is prs for music which i'm registered personally but there are also private companies where you can you can Google them, you can reach them out, and you can send an email, or you can find them also on LinkedIn. For example, music licensing. A car company, is, let's say, is looking for music for their ad. And uh, so the job of the music publisher is to look for a song in their catalog. If your song will be used, the publisher will negotiate a sync license fee with a car company in which the company has to pay in order to obtain a legal authorization to use the song in their ad. And you will get a big commission depending on the company. If Coca-Cola will use your music in their ad, you're probably going to make a lot of money. In, th in this case, you provide your back catalog. Let's say that you, re you released an album in your music career. You will provide all your music to the music licensing company and, and they will be checking all your song if it's uh, suitable for any of the pitch that is provided by the company. Um, now, there are different music licensing companies, Musicbed, Soundstripe, Epidemic Sounds, Artlist, Pond5, Audio Jungle. You can just Google them, music licensing company. But in general, music licensing and music publishing are essentially part of the same, the same company. Music publishing is dealing with music licensing. You can be a music producer for a client, for a person, and there are three outcomes. Usually you can make music for an artist. An artist is a person that usually has a vision that knows how to put the character in the music. And you can just be the music producer of that artist. Or you can be a music producer for a singer. For example, Billie Eilish, she has a brother who makes music for her and she just sings. So you have to find the singer that don't know how to make music so that you can make a request. You can also make music for an art, for a rapper, for an MC. Usually rappers focus on being rappers, not really how to make beat. Um, the key to find clients on this, it's basically networking. Networking is an essential part of finding clients online 
And you need to create a strong presence online. You need to join communities on Facebook, on social, on social media. You need to have a website. You need to have a strong presence that you are a music producer and then you can work for somebody. And then you can find clients by fishing them on Facebook groups. Uh, you can also sell beats. Uh, as a beat maker, there are certain websites that um, you can upload your beats and uh, you know people are just going to buy beats online. As a rapper, you look for uh, a rapper. A rapper also is looking for beats online to buy and then they can you know spit some verse under it. You can make a, a living by doing sample libraries. You know, I'm sure you heard about sample libraries. You know, you can have uh, house parts, uh, techno beats, techno loops, uh, pop vocals, you know, all those sort of uh, sound that music producers buy and download to make music. So you can do this uh, within a company. So you can join a company such as uh, Loopmaster, Splice, Contact, Sony. Um, I, I personally work for Sony Japan uh, with a company called Soundmain. Uh, which is affiliated with Sony Japan. And I found this uh, uh, by networking on Facebook, actually. Um, so you can also sell uh, sample libraries by yourself as an independent music producer. I actually uh, made a tutorial on how to do this as an independent producer and sell it by yourself. You can see here there is a, a link to the video. Uh, but yeah, you can uh, sell by yourself uh, using... Um, for example, uh, Bandcamp, or you can use a digital distribution such as TuneCore, DistroKid, or you can also sell it with your website as well, which actually looks, um, you know, it has a professional look. Um, but yes, when you're selling sample libraries by yourself, you don't have to share any, any payment with the company because all the money will go to you. Well, if you have a digital distribution, they will take a small percentage out of it, but, you know, it's usually not so much money and uh, you will retain the money yourself. Mixing and mastering, you can be a mixing and mastering engineer. So now mixing and mastering goes hand in hand. A mixing engineer is also a mastering engineer. So you can be either a mixing and mastering engineer for a music producer, for independent music producers, or you can be a mixing and mastering engineer for a record label that it's looking for a mastering engineer to their releases. So usually, um, you know, some some record labels have their own mastering guy that it's trust, trustable to their ears and they constantly working for them. Otherwise, another way to um, finding clients and use, using social media, using sponsored hats on Facebook and Instagram, uh, you know, with the hope that somebody is going to spot you. Um, you can make uh, a living by teaching music, education. So uh, there are various categories on education. You can either sell it, you know, by yourself, by making private lessons. I used to make private lessons back in the days on Skype. And, you know, you just work uh, word of mouth uh, with friends, you know, always a social media, strong community. Teach one, one per one or make online classes. Uh, using, um, you know, Twitch or Skype or, you know, any social media. Uh, or you can start your YouTube channel, which uh, I'm actually doing this. You're actually looking at my YouTube channel where I'm doing tutorials of music production and film sound design. And you can later monetize your channel if you have certain number of subscribers and public watch hours. Um, otherwise, you can teach for a, for a class, for a course, for a school, but for this you need a certificate, some sort of diploma, because you know, you're know teaching for an official school. Perform live. Okay, so performing live, clubs, concerts, bars, restaurants, you can be a DJ, you can play live set as a music producer, um, you know, it's not so easy to get to perform live because you need to know how to sell yourself as a artist that you are. Um, it's uh, probably um, it's very challenging. There are so many DJs out there, especially in Europe and United States. But you can also make money after this. And, and probably I shouldn't even put this because it's normal that you would probably have DJed once in your life. But, you know, I just put that's another way to, 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 to make some living, you know. One of the most interesting ways to promote yourself 
the best things of basking is that you are promoting yourself in person. People can see you, can come and talk to you while you're playing music. And you will be exposed to a lot of people. So, for example, I used to live in London and you remember there were many people that were doing basking in uh, uh, South Bank, which is the area where there is the London Eye. And that area is the best place ever to make basking because you are exposed to at least 2,000 to 3,000 people a day. People can just see you. You can basically put your social media handle, uh, you know, in a piece of paper, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Bandcamp, and, uh, you know, or the QR code. People can just, you know, tip you online and uh, you can make either good money or not so good money. It depends on which city you are doing it, which area and the environment. Obviously, if you do it in London, South Bank, it's really good. I'm not sure if you need some permission to do this. I know that London, you need permission for everything. So you're probably going to have to check that out or, you know, any other city. Uh, but it's really useful because you can make loads of content in person. You can create a big fan base and you can make some good money as well. Um, the last things, yeah, you can also film or document from uh, San Francisco and he plays a GoPro on his guitar. And basically he's filming each of his performance. And sometimes there are, you know, fun, interesting or dangerous things that are happening to him. Uh, I'll put the link in the description of this guy. So yeah, Baskin is one of them. Working in the radio. So you can be either a podcast editor. Nowadays, how many podcasts there are on YouTube? There are, there is a countless podcast that are, that are popping out. And uh, there is always a need of someone who is uh, editing the dialogue or recording it. Um, you can be also a live radio engineer or live podcast technician in behind the scenes. Um, or you can work in the radio as a music selector, as a DJ. So you can select music for the radio. Uh, those, those three, and probably there are more, but so far I just came out with those three. I've got a friend that I remember university that was working for, for Amazon audiobooks and uh, they had a company that were recording the voice of the person that was reading the books and they were then editing uh, the voice in, uh, you know, as a form of podcast. So audiobooks, it's also another way to, to, to make, to make a side job. Sell your music as an artist or as a record label. Of course, when I was uh, beginning this podcast, I was saying that selling music, it's really little money, but there are ways to increase the, uh, you know, you can this, you can this do as a side hustle, I was saying. So the first thing is it's uh, selling music on Bandcamp. Like I can't talk uh, enough positive about Bandcamp. Bandcamp is the platform where you can sell your music and is a, a direct contact between artist and fan. There is no middleman. There is no distribution in the middle. So you put your music in Bandcamp and the fan, they will buy from you and they will, uh, a Bandcamp will take just a small percentage from you, which is the most um, fair and organic way. Um, otherwise, you can choose to sell your music on digital platform. Uh, like iTunes, Beatport, Apple Music, uh, but to sell in those platforms, you need a digital distribution. Now, the difference between selling on Bandcamp or selling a digital platform is the exposure. If you are selling on iTunes, on Beatport, on Apple Music, your music will be spread out furthermore to the internet. Whereas if you're selling on Bandcamp, it will be just on Bandcamp. So you will be you know, in charge of your own promotion when your digital distribution distribute your music on the most popular platform. They kind of promote your music, but percentage of, of earnings that you will make will be very little if you are uh, part of a niche uh, music genre or underground. Um, otherwise, you can use a digital distribution to sell and distribute your own music as a label or as an, ar or as an artist. I, I've realized, I'm not sure about it, but uh, I remember that I was selling some album using Amuse, which is actually is a free distribution from Scandinavia. And I remember that I was selling my own album uh, without the need of a record label, but just directly using a digital distribution. So DistroKid, TuneCore and Amuse are the three main uh, digital distribution that uh, you can sell your music without the need of a label. Uh, then you, if you have a, if you have a record label, you should register your record label to a publishing agency and the music licensing. Because if you have a record label, you might have 20 EPs, which is let's say uh, you know 80 
tracks. So you should register yourself if you have a, if you have a record label. You should re- register yourself in the public ag- publishing agency because all this music will be maybe picked up for a, a commercial opportunity. Uh, then is uh, selling vinyl. Selling vinyl, it's it is profitable, but you need to invest money on pressing vinyl, which is uh, quite expensive. But uh, you know it is another w- form of monetization. Sound designer. Okay, so this is my favorite because uh, I am a sound designer and I work full time as a sound designer. Um, if you know how to manipulate sound, you know, in my case, I was a music producer and I was able to, uh, you know, understand sound manipulation. Uh, then I, st- I studied sound design. I've made a master in the university and I became a sound, a film sound designer. And I work now as a full time film sound designer. I'm a freelancer. So. Uh, as a sound designer, you can be a film sound designer, animation sound designer, documentary sound designer, and probably the most profitable is a video game sound designer because there is a lot of work as a video game sound designer. Uh, as a film sound designer, I can tell the most. You can um, you can you know provide different services, which is uh, ADR recording, which is voiceover, sound editing, dialogue editing, sound restoration, mixing, foley creation or editing sound engineering and also voice acting. Voice acting is actually um, is, is a side job for an actor. They can they can do voice acting and they will need a sound designer to do this. Well, mostly probably sound recordings, but you know, uh, those uh, voice need to be edited in the computer. So the same for animation sound designer, you know, you have an animation which is computer animation is a cartoon. You have to create sounds from nothing. Uh, for documentary is probably the same. Uh, but it's slightly different than a film. And then for video game sound designer, in this case, you need to learn different programs that are not like Pro Tools or Ableton Live, but are like v- Vivai, WYs, and uh, another one, I don't remember the name, but uh, it's probably the most profitable because video game sound designer, there is a big demand in the market. Another way to make some money on the side, it's to be a sound recordist. Now, sound recordist is the person that is recording sound. So there are different career pathways that you can choose. The first one is a recording sound of the nature, field recording, sound of the city, sound of the urban, sound of the forest, sound of the beach, sound of the seaside. Um, there is a sort of micro business online where there are some companies, some independent people that are selling uh, sound of the, you know, recording of the nature, recording of our planet, basically. And um, they are selling it either uh, independently on their own website or on Bandcamp, or you can sell it use, using a digital distribution platform, as I said before, uh, such as um, uh, DistroQd or TuneCore, where they will put your sound on Apple Music or Spotify or places like this. Um, the possibility to make money under this, uh, it's, uh, it's even, even smaller than music because um, uh, for example, there is a website called freesound.org where you can download sound for free. Uh, there are um, paid subscription of websites such as uh, Soundly or Soundminer where there are so many sounds. So you can make some little money, but it's really, really difficult things, you know. Um, otherwise, another thing you can do here is you can be a location sound mixer for film series of documentary. Now. I am a location sound mixer. I do this as a job on the side of being a sound designer. I work on a film set and uh, I have my my recorder, I have my boom microphones, I have my lavalier and uh, I I work in a film, my uh, you know, uh, microphoning actors and recording dialogue and occasionally sound. Um the location sound mixer can be a full-time job which is very well paid if you're working for good companies or if you're working for Netflix, you would make really good money. And, and it's a full-time job. You you won't do anything else, really, <laughs> if you if you have a good connection as a sound mixer, as a location sound mixer, sorry. Another thing is you can work as a sound recordist for corporate doing interviews, mainly interviews of representative of, of bank or financial institution. And um, there is uh, good money in corporate uh, because usually you will be part of a film crew that is uh, responsible to doing mainly documentaries or interview for, for companies. So they will also require sound department as well. Um, you can make good money in film. You can make good money in corporate. In corporate, you usually make good money because uh, it's a corporate. So there is big money involved. 
in film, it depends if you're working for a big company, for Netflix or for a Hollywood company, then there is uh, some good money. Those are all the audio manipulation Abilities on monetization. <laughs> it sounds like a like a, a, a rap rhyme, but yes, you know all of those are possibilities that you can apply at the same time as you are a music producer and trying to sell your music and making a career for yourself. You can do a side hustle and make some income with all this. And again, I'm not an expert in this. I know my two cents. But uh, and I'm sure there is much more than this, but I wanted to share with you this. So yeah, that's everything for today. I hope that you enjoy this tutorial as much as I did explaining it to you and um, see you on the next one.